The year 2020 will be remembered as one of the most tumultuous years in recent history. Whether it was the natural disasters or the mass protests in the streets because of injustice, and some of those were even violent protests, or controversial national elections, mass unemployment, recessions, and of course the health crisis brought about by the worldwide pandemic COVID-19. The list is endless. However, can we overcome all these challenges as we approach the new year of 2021 and beyond? And who certainly will overcome all of the experiences of 2020, all of the grief, victories? Will you? Can you? And if so, how can you? I'm Bob Pauline, and we're going to answer these and much more today, right here at the Iglesia de Cristo International Edition. And joining us today in our discussion is Brother Donald Pinock there in Toronto, uh, Canada. Welcome, Brother Donald. Brother Phil Velasquez there in the, in the UK, as well as Brother <laughs> Andrew there in Melbourne, Australia. We welcome you all to our uh, discussion, and thanks for giving your time. Brothers, uh, before we begin our discussion, let's uh, just have a short review of some of the dramatic headlines that we saw throughout this year and even experienced in this year of 2020. Let's take a look. 2020 has not been a kind year. It's been a year that preyed on the weak and the sick, a year that claimed lives and tested trust. A year filled with division and upended by chaos. It's been a year dominated by staggering loss of life across the world. But it's a world still filled with courage, compassion, and heart. Pandemics occur. They have always occurred and they will occur. It would be really shameful if we don't learn from what we've been through. This year, although it may have gone by fast, brothers, but it's going to be for a long time hard to forget so many of these tragedies that we just viewed in that uh, uh, Time um, uh, magazine video clip and uh, the horrific news events that have transpired in the year 2020. What are some of the significant moments, though, that you can remember and maybe point out as we begin our discussion, or as we prepare to begin our discussion in, in your part of the world? For example, uh, Brother Donald up there in, in, in Canada, what's been happening in 2020? What can you point out? Well, Brother Bob, just like all other countries in the world, this year in Canada has been dominated by the ravaging effects of this COVID-19 pandemic. The worsening economic climate, for example, that has caused businesses not just to shut down temporarily, but sad to say, many permanently. This leading to so many people losing their means of occupation or their jobs. We can also see, Brother Bob, the rising rate of people suffering from mental health issues. Medical workers, they are exhausted when it comes to the pressure of dealing with the rising number of COVID patients. All this and so much more is being experienced here in Canada. Yes, I, I think that's really, uh, really sad, Brother Donald, that uh, no matter where they are in the world, those uh, frontliners are experiencing, as you described. How about there in the UK, Brother Phil? What, uh, what can you point out? Any, any highlights that you would like us to all consider as we discuss the experiences and such of 2020? Yes, Brother Bob, we're experiencing the same, I think, that everyone else is around the world. But what's making it you know, more difficult, especially for us in the United Kingdom, is this uh, Brexit situation. It's carried on until now and nothing yet has been uh, you know, solidified regarding, regarding our transition out of the European Union. And um, as you know, when it comes to um, you know, infection rates and death rates um, from this COVID, we here in the UK have one of the highest rates, not only in Europe, but in the world. And, um, and as, you know, as of now, the news that we've received is that there's a new strain of this coronavirus. And it's, uh, well, uh, it's, it's the first discovered uh, in the world here in the United Kingdom. 
and it's just created so many more problems, economic, you know, health problems. Uh, it's been very difficult, very yeah. difficult year yeah, that, for that, everybody that, in the United uh, Kingdom. That, that Brexit is uh, very much tied to the status of the economy there in the UK and, and in other places in Europe. So you, you've, you've got the, uh, all kinds of challenges for the families living in your, in your part of the world. Let's, let's go to uh, Australia. Uh, Brother Andrew, uh, I think beyond the COVID and beyond some economic strains, you've had some, some unique experiences of uh, crisis, let's call it, there in Australia in 2020. What, what's it been like over there? Oh, that's right, Brother Bob. Actually, it's pretty hard to believe that uh, it was this year in 2020, you know, before the coronavirus dominated the headlines, uh, what the entire world witnessed happening here in Australia were those uh, ravaging bushfires that savaged many communities and town centers, uh, not only here in Victoria, but even in New South Wales. And actually, Brother Philip was also here during that time, and uh, we saw firsthand the, uh, the damage and destruction that uh, those bushfires caused many communities uh, here in regional Victoria, and uh, I mentioned in New South Wales as well. And to make matters worse, right after the bushfires, uh, right when we were getting out of that, that's when the pandemic struck. So, you know, those communities that were hit worse by the bushfires, they haven't been able to recover because of uh, the pandemic and uh, the economic effects that this pandemic has had, including the lockdown. So uh, just terrible things that uh, one after the other we can see happening. And I know it's not just here in Australia, but in every part of the world. Brother Bob, it just seemed that the sufferings, they're, they're so endless. You know, one day after the other, all you can hear on the news is about the ripple effects of this global pandemic. Okay, but let's, uh, let's consider this question in regards to that, Brother Donald. The, the question that we open with for our discussion, as we consider all these things pointed out, can, can we overcome the, the immense, uh, I keep using the word uh, horrific, but these immense problems that have uh, uh, occurred in this year, 2020? It seems that it, it's, it's just getting, getting worse, right? But Brother, Brother Donald, what, what, what does God teach us? What does he want us to understand about all these things? Let's read 1 Samuel 22, and the verses are 29 to 30, and this is stated. O Lord, you are my lamp. The Lord turns my darkness into light. With you, I can attack a line of soldiers. With my God, I can break through barricades. If God is with us, dear friends, we can overcome any problem in life. Now, why are we so sure? Who is the uh, spokesperson here? None other than King David. And what was the experience of King David? Because God was with him. He said, with you, I can attack a line of soldiers. With my God, I can break through barricades. What, uh, what, was, uh, what did he mean there, Brother Donald? What, what kind of barricades in life was David able to get through? And he was able to get through it because God was with him. So many examples, Brother Bob. For example, when he was still a young boy, he was shepherding the flock of his uh, parents, of his relatives. And many times when he came to the flock, they were being pursued by predators such as lions and bears. David, because of the power and because of the presence of God, was able to overcome them. As he grew up, even when he came to the, the Philistine army that was always battling against the Israelites at that time, well, they had a giant, a giant of a warrior by the name of Goliath, and he was taunting the Israelite army. But because of David's faith and also his trust in the Lord our God, he overcame. In fact, he slew Goliath. There was even a time after this because his popularity was growing. And when he came to King Saul, he was envious or jealous to the point that he was pursuing David to take his life. But still, here is David, because of his faith and trust in the Lord our God, he was able to overcome even that. And when he eventually became king, even though when he came to Israel, they were surrounded by mighty nations with their armies still in battle, David was successful. And again, it is because God was with him. He was rewarded for that loyalty. And in, in, in our time too, 
Brother Phil, let's go to you. We're, we're members of the Church of Christ, and, and we're also loyal servants of God. And we, too, face a lot of trials, uh, uh, not, not necessarily the exact ones that, that uh, David faced, but deep, horrific experiences like we've been talking about uh, throughout the year uh, 2020, right? We, we, too, have had many, many challenges. Why is it that when we, members of the Church of Christ, when we have God with us, although we're not exempt from the troubles that we've been talking about in life, and, and especially during this past year, but we can succeed overcoming them all, whatever the problem that may be in front of us, we'll be able to uh, uh, overcome it in, a, in a, our life, Brother Phil. Uh, the reason, called Brother Bob, is because we have our almighty God who has a promise to his people. And we can read that promise here in Psalm 91, 14 to 15. This is what uh, we are taught from the Bible. God says, I will save those who love me and will protect those who acknowledge me as Lord. When they call to me, I will answer them. When they are in trouble, I will be with them. I will rescue them and honor them. I will reward them with long life. I will save them. So you see there, Brother Bob, we will be able to overcome any problem because our Almighty God has a promise for His people. And again, what was, how, how does the Bible describing there that, uh, that promise of God to His people? Well, we read here, Brother Bob, uh, his promises uh, to his people are to save them, to protect them. Whenever they would call to him, he would always be ready to hear them, to answer their prayers, to rescue them in times of trouble. Most of all, the promise of God, he will reward them with long life. And the longest life is the true life eternal in his heavenly kingdom. Thank you, Brother Phil. So, dear friends, the, it, God is the ultimate solution. All those things that happened in 2020, there's a solution. God is the solution for us not to be overcome by anything. And we don't know what 2021 will bring, right? In this past year of 2020, millions were overcome or defeated by financial, economic problems, family problems, uh, sicknesses, which then, that's why, dear viewers, that's, that's why we're always inviting you. Come, join with us here. Receive of the wonderful promises of God, like what Brother Phil just read, his promises of protection, promises to rescue, promises to not leave us alone, especially when we encounter the hardest troubles that come in life nowadays that may seem really so, so hard to bear. You know, Brother Bob, that's exactly why everyone needs to make sure that every day of our life, not only we have God with us, but that God remains with us. But, but wait a second, Brother Andrew. It's, will everyone in this world that's suffering all of these uh, current uh, uh, troubles in the times we live in now, is everyone going to be a recipient of these promises that Brother Phil read about a while ago, that he will protect and save them? Is, is that for everybody? Is there something else our viewers need to understand? Unfortunately, those promises are not available to just everyone. What, why not? Our viewers need, need to know right away, Brother Andrew, know how they can avail themselves as well of these wonderful promises of God. We're about to begin the year 2021. They need to know this. You're absolutely right, Brother Bob. And uh, we can't give the answer, so we'll have to get the answer from the Holy Bible. So let's find out from the Bible, who are the people in our time who can assure that they will receive those promises from our Lord God? Allow me to share with our viewers and with all of us what's written here in the book of Isaiah. Here in chapter 62, when the verses are 11 up to 12, this is what it states. Behold, the Lord has proclaimed unto the ends of the earth, say you to the daughter of Zion, behold, your salvation comes. Behold, his reward is with him and his work before him. And they shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and you shall be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. The, the view is what we've just read is actually a prophecy of our Lord God written in the Holy Bible. And what we should notice is the ones being prophesied in this verse, the ones being referred to. 
Because we heard in the verse that we read, the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And what is the great blessing for God's holy people or those who are redeemed of the Lord? The verse also said that they will not be forsaken and they can also expect to receive salvation or eternal life. So there it is, dear viewers. But uh, Brother Andrew, who, who, does, who is God referring to there as his people who are not forsaken, who are redeemed and are assured of salvation and, and the help that is, uh, is needed during all these crises that take place in, in life? They're, they're, they won't be forsaken. They, they won't be alone. Well, according to the proclamation of our Lord God himself, he was referring to the daughter of Zion, from the ends of the earth. But uh, wait, wait a minute, brothers. What, what, when is that time? We, we, have to, we have to identify not only those to whom that those promises were being given specifically there, but also the time period in which uh, the, the prophecies there would be fulfilled. It was referred to there, as you read, uh, Brother Andrew, as a, a time called the, uh, the ends of the earth. But w when specifically is that uh, time period? We know that that period, ends of the earth, refers to the time when the end of the earth, or Judgment Day, is already near. You know, we can read in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verses 6 up to 8, our Lord Jesus Christ was telling his followers, and telling all of us in the Bible, how we can identify when the end is near, or when it's the time, ends of the earth. And this would be concurrent with the outbreak of a world war. Because our Lord Jesus Christ mentioned there, there would be a, a wars involving uh, many nations and kingdoms. Alongside these world wars would also be great famine, pestilence, and uh, even calamities like earthquakes in, in various places. And Christ even mentioned that these things that would happen would just be the beginning of sorrows. Uh, the world would only get worse. And if we look back uh, during the time of history, it becomes very clear that the first instance where all these things were happening was in fact the outbreak of World War I, which was on July 27, 1914. Therefore, that period of time ends of the earth is referring to the fulfillment nowadays, July 27, 1914, which is why we inside the Church of Christ have firm faith that we are the fulfillment of that prophecy. We are the ones God promised that he would not forsake us, and, and above all, that uh, we would receive salvation come the day of judgment. Because this church, the Church of Christ, or Iglesia Ni Cristo, that, that we belong to, this church was registered on July 27, 1914, coinciding with the outbreak of the First World War, or that period of time, ends of the earth. So that's the people then of whom the Lord was issuing the promises. The promises would be to his people at that particular time period, ends of the earth, or the time that will begin in July 1914. The Church of Christ registered July 1914. That's his promises to the Church of Christ. But okay, let's look into this deeper, brothers. Let's look into just a little bit more. Uh, because, you know, Brother Andrew just read these promises were specifically, and it mentioned in the prophecy there, Brother Andrew, that you read, specifically for the daughter of Zion. So who would are also identified as the daughter of Zion from that time period, ends of the earth, of July 1914? Uh, it would be God's nation that was redeemed, God's nation that would not be forsaken. So, Brother Donald, uh, Let's look at that a little more. Who, who is that? Uh, how is that f those uh, uh, people of God from that time uh, period further identified? Brother Bob, you're quite right in uh, making mention of this point. In order for our viewers to, to really understand which is that daughter of Zion, which is God's nation that was redeemed and God promised he would never forsake. Well, we have to remember that Zion refers to the first century Church of Christ. And when it comes to Bible scholars, they've made known of this. But here in this prophecy, it makes mention of the daughter of Zion as the recipients to the many wonderful promise of the Almighty God. So one has to be counted amongst those 
who will experience these promises of God, that they will not be forsaken. And we have to be included then in those identified as being within his nation, which is the daughter of Zion. Now, how can they be identified? Again, they were redeemed. So the logical question is, which is this daughter of Zion that has been redeemed? Again, we turn to the Bible for the answer. Let's read here in Acts, the chapter is 20, and the verse is 28, and the following is recorded. Take heed, therefore, to yourselves and to all the flock, over which the Holy Spirit has appointed you overseers to feed the church of Christ, which he has purchased with his blood. When it comes to the church of Christ, it was purchased or it was redeemed through the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, when it comes to the nation of God that he has chosen or elected in our time, it is none other than the church of Christ to which we belong. Therefore, we are the ones whom God promised that he would not forsake. No matter what happens in this world, no matter what we may go through as a member of the true church of Christ, we have God to lean on, we have God to trust in. Because again, he has a promise, he is not going to forsake us. That is why, beloved friends, we need to comply with his condition in order for us to receive the outpouring of his love that is truly needed at this time. Yeah, that's, that's a wonderful point, Brother Donald. So what, what we're uh, reading here then, uh, dear friends, dear viewers, according to the, to the Bible, and to ensure that you will never be forsaken in times of crisis that everyone goes through in life, such as was experienced during this past year, 2020. One needs to be sure he's part of God's nation, part of that, the daughter of Zion that was redeemed by the blood of Christ. Why? Because that's the ones to whom the Lord gave the promise. One needs to be a member, therefore, of the church of Christ. Dear friends, when we come back in just a moment, we're going to take a look at uh, some of the wonderful things that you will then become part of in the new year, 2021. You can be part of such great and profound things taking place here inside the church of Christ. You can join with us in serving God. You can join with us in serving our fellow men as well. How so? You can be part of making 2021 a much better year than 2020 has been. How can you do that? How can you have a part along with us? We, we will all continue with this discussion. Take a look at what you can be part of. It's good to see you. Thank you for having us. I'm just gonna tell you, I felt love in here. We'd just like to say thank you, uh, greatly appreciate it, and thank you for your kindness. You guys are very generous, um, very thoughtful, very caring. Um, these are things that are often overlooked um, for donations. I would like to present a check to the Boys and Girls Club in the amount of $10,000. Boy, it was almost in tears, you know? It's, it's not, you know, very many people do things like that. And um, he's never had a laptop. He was almost in tears and that just, it touched my heart, you know? It does everything that they've done for us. Oh, there you go. Power cords are inside. around the whole world. So I've been on it and the website is amazing to have a look at all the different places where you've been able to help people. To me, it's, it, it is a, a, a very different church. You're having to give, but actually giving back to the community and helping the people in need all around the world, especially after tragedies, um, is amazing. And, and when you do that, you put the smile on people's faces. And when you see that, you know that you've sort of hit the heart with them. Welcome back everyone. 
Today, we're taking a look back at 2020, and although, as we've been discussing, 2020 has been a very uh, tough year, there were also some really wonderful things as we witnessed right there in that uh, particular uh, video clip. And you, dear friends, you can volunteer along with us in 2021 and beyond and, and join us in this great works. Brothers, you know, we, we, in that video clip, we watched a highlight reel. We could call it that, right? A highlight reel of all the different ways or some of the many different ways that the Church of Christ members have been helping their communities during this challenging year that we've just all experienced. In your part of the world, how was the Church of Christ there in the UK, Canada, Australia, and other places? How were you able to help or aid our fellow men there? Therefore, lessening the, the, the crisis of 2020 for many. Let's go to you first there, Brother Phil, in the UK. Oh, Brother Bob, it's been fabulous here in the United Kingdom, especially in our district. You know, since the lockdown in um, uh, the early part of this year until today, uh, the brethren throughout the ecclesiastical district have distributed uh, over 1,600, you know, boxes and packages throughout the district, which equate to about 11 tons, metric tons of, of, of food and, you know, any kind of help that we've, that we've distributed throughout not only the country, but also all the other countries within our district. Mm -hmm. How about up there in Canada, Brother Donald? Well, Brother Bob, all the districts in Canada have held multiple aid to humanity activities in order to help people in the respective community or region who have been, of course, affected adversely when it comes to the economic slowdown due to this pandemic. Some districts even have gone so far as to reach out to indigenous communities to offer them not only food, but also when it comes to winter clothing. And a shout out to the district of Manitoba. They donated over 10,000 face masks to certain schools. Also, monetary donations from the FYM Foundation have also been handed out to uh, food banks, for example. Meaning to say, yes, the church has been doing positive things throughout the year 2020. So members of the Church of Christ, dear friends, all, all over the world have these uh, INC Giving Aid to Humanity uh, projects that you can join and take part in at, uh, going forward uh, from here incgiving.org, you can, you can go there to that website, you can see how you can volunteer and help out uh, and be part of the great work. But let's go there to uh, uh, the land down under, as we call it there, Brother Andrew, in Australia. Have, have, have Church of Christ members been doing such kind of uh, INC giving projects and aid to humanity uh, events there uh, in Australia as well? Oh, yes, Brother Bob, the, the church members here in Australia are also united in our outreach works. You know, if I go back to uh, uh, the bushfires that happened earlier in the year, we held uh, massive aid for humanity activities, uh, giving out not only care packages to uh, those affected, but uh, even cash donations to those frontliners who are out there uh, battling those uh, bushfires. And uh, the way that it helped out even more was that when the pandemic struck, you know, those same organizations and same communities that we reached out to during the bushfires, they uh, once again reached out to us and we were able to connect with them and uh, give them more assistance, uh, especially once the pandemic struck and the lockdowns affected their livelihoods. You know, we kept that uh, connection with them and they've still been able to help them until now. That's, that's, that's great. It's, as we can see, it's all over the world. Uh, members of the Church of Christ are, are, are having an impact. You know, brothers, earlier in our discussion, we identified that, uh, you know, it's the Church of Christ members that are the ones in our times who would receive the promises of God, his promises to help and strengthen, enable us to overcome challenges as we face them going forward. But what about those who are viewing our program, brothers, but are not yet members of the Church of Christ? But, well, they want to avail themselves of the wonderful promises and, and the blessings that God has in store for His people. How can they do that also? How can they be part of all of these wonderful things and ultimately the blessings of God and the greatest blessing of all, eternal life? So, that God, so how could they put themselves in a position where God Himself would surely want to help in their life? Maybe someone would ask, brothers, uh, please address this as well. Uh, wouldn't God help just all people? Is he asking anything from people first before they would be under the umbrella of his loving protection that we've been uh, talking about here? 
Well, as we move on into year 2021 and, and beyond, you know, th there's something that we can understand about how to receive God's help, how that promised help of God can be received by those whom God wants to receive them. Uh, I'll read to you in uh, the book of John, chapter 8, and the verse is uh, 29. Uh, please listen, dear viewers, to, uh, to what we can read in the Bible. And he who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone. Because I always do what pleases him. But dear viewers, we know the one speaking in this verse is none other than the Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. And he, and he told us, it's no secret, how we can keep God with us in our life. Because our Lord Jesus Christ, he, he explained to us the reason why God is always with him and was always with him throughout his life here on earth is because our Lord Jesus Christ said, I always do what pleases him. And because of that, Brother Andrew, uh, the Lord Jesus said, he wasn't left alone. Many people have felt that they, they were all alone in 2020. Didn't he experience uh, a lot of, uh, he was betrayed by his friends, right? He experienced a lot of sufferings when he was still here on earth, right, Brother Andrew? Well, if we compare the sufferings experienced by our Lord Jesus Christ when he was still here on earth, uh, compared to what we may have experienced this uh, uh, year of 2020, you know, whether it be the calamities, uh, the pandemic, the, the, the health crisis and economic crisis. Bushfires in your place. Ex exactly. But it's still no comparison compared to what uh, our Lord Jesus Christ experienced when he was here on earth. Dear viewers, it was mentioned by Brother Andrew that, yes, we go through various challenges, but of course, much less severe than what our Lord Jesus Christ experienced. Nevertheless, if we do what pleases God, just like what Christ did, then God will always remain with us. He will never leave us alone. So, dear viewers, Brother Donald, isn't, it, isn't that what, what everyone wants? Everybody wants that, right? That God would never leave us alone in times that we're experiencing sadness and loneliness and times of problems that come in this life. Everyone wants to know that God will be there with us, right? And we don't know what we're going to be facing in the year 2021 as well, right? Yes, Brother Bob, we need to have God by our sides. We can't be left alone. But again, when it comes to those who will be recipients of God's loving mercy and kindness, it is those who do what is pleasing to God. So the logical question is, what is pleasing to God? Let us allow the Bible to answer once again. 1 Thessalonians 2, the verses 12, and let us read. Encouraging, comforting, and urging you to live lives worthy of God, who calls you into his kingdom and glory. Therefore, the Bible message is very clear. We must live our lives worthy of God's call into his kingdom. And you know, Brother Donald, uh, Brother Bob, that's why we're, we in the Church of Christ are so fortunate that we have a loving church administrator who always wants us to benefit from the promises of our Almighty God. And that's why our executive minister, our beloved brother Eduardo V. Manalo, he never stops teaching and counseling us to encourage us to, to always uh, you know, remain obedient to the commandments of God, to live in a manner that would make us worthy of his blessings. That's why he, he launched this campaign, the intensive renewal of life, of our lives. Why? So that we would be the first to receive all of these promises and blessings. Mm. From our almighty God. Uh, you know, brothers, uh, those uh, viewing our program, you know, everybody will have possibly, uh, it's, let's word it that way, possibly their own idea of what living a worthy life uh, means, what a worthy life would look like. So for the sake of our viewers, brothers, we have to ask, we have to, have to uh, ask this. I want to ask you this. How can a person live one's life worthy in the sight of God? Well, Brother Bob, uh, before our viewers come up with any kinds of answers, it's probably best that we get the answers from the Holy Scriptures. So I want to quote what Apostle Paul taught in the book of Philippians, chapter 1, and uh, in verse 27, this is what Apostle Paul taught. Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in one spirit, 
contending as one man for the faith of the gospel. When it comes to living in a way that is pleasing to our Lord God, we don't need to come up with our own standards because Apostle Paul said in this verse, whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel. Therefore, whatever situation we're in, you know, we want to point out those words Apostle Paul said, whatever happens. So even in this pandemic, even if 2021 becomes even worse and more difficult than 2020, whatever happens, we must carefully watch how we live our lives day by day. Can you be more specific, Brother Andrew? In what way shall a person uh, look so intently at how they're living their life? What do you mean? Apostle Paul was the one who said, our lives must be conducted worthy of the gospel. So the gospel is our standard, the Holy Bible. A anything we do, everything we do in our life, we, we need to ask ourselves first, is it in accordance with God's will? We have to live a life pleasing before the Lord our God in order for us to receive those blessings. We should not allow ourselves to become disqualified or found unworthy of God's help during these troublesome times. Because, for example, when it comes to the financial desperation that some people are going through, when it comes to those who are losing their job, others who have health issues, well, they may be tempted to resort to evil or illegal means to escape their predicament. By so doing, however, tragically, they will not be able to receive those mercies and those blessings of the Lord our God. Absolutely, Brother Donald, but we have to remember, especially our dear friends, we mustn't do anything that is contrary to the gospel or the commandments of our Almighty God so that God can remain with us. We're going to find out why, why is it so important that we will not allow ourselves to lose God in our life. When we look back to the beginning of this year, 2020 has been unlike any other. So much has happened since that the word unprecedented really means nothing now. And then just when we thought we'd seen it all, this virus comes along. The coronavirus outbreak is now What we pandemic. hoped would last only a few months has taken us to the end of this year. And since then, Dreams were put on hold, while others crumbled. Couples struggled, and so did parents. Childhoods were lost. Loved ones unable to say hello, while others unable to say goodbye. The optimistic thought the global standstill would be a sort of reset, a chance for the world to recover and heal, recover from all of the pollution and conflict, to heal the deep divisions and suffering. Breaking news from Lebanon. But the world soon realized how naive such thinking was. It wasn't long before our news feed was bombarded with what was already so familiar, civil unrest deep divisions and injustice, disasters, both natural and man-made. Just when others were trying to get back on their feet, the storms came and they didn't stop. So many became hopeless, bitter and even angry, counting what they had lost. But not us, your people, O oh God, Yes, we've suffered too, and have shed much tears. But when we count what we do have, they far outweigh any pain and loss. The air in our lungs, our sound mind and strong spirit, but most of all, our life with you. To serve you under the guidance of a loving church administrator who leads us, so we can one day be with you in our true home. And that is why before this year comes to an end, we, your people, will thank you, O oh God. We will gather together to praise you as we have always done. Nothing will change. Even if we had to endure so much this year, there is still so much to be thankful for. 
we will abound in our thanks to you. We know the condition of the world won't improve, but this is our promise to you, O oh God. We will continue united with our spiritual leaders in all you expect from us. This is why we live. We live for your honor and for your glory. But as you continue to bless your nation, please remember us, your people. Only one thing we ask from you, O oh God, in the next year full of uncertainties, please never leave us alone. Give us the strength to overcome any trial. When you see us overwhelmed with sorrow, embrace us. When we are too weak to stand, gently pick us up. Provide for us, please, with what we need. We want to finish our race like those who have gone before us. So keep us close to you, O oh God, our Father, close to your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and to those whom you've placed to lead us so we can finally reach our true home, our true rest. Welcome back everyone to the Glacier Ni Cristo International Edition. We just watched together a very moving piece on why members of the Church of Christ will, will always be thankful no matter what the situation of the world may be. And this was a piece uh, produced by your team there in the UK, isn't it, uh, Brother Phil? What, what was the inspiration behind this wonderful video? Yes, Brother Bob, uh, the inspiration actually was uh, what our executive minister, Brother Eduardo Manalo, said in a recent uh, worship service of his. And I paraphrase here. He said, uh, the good always outweighs the bad. You know, um, there are always more blessings to count. And we just thought this would be a perfect time before our Thanksgiving and before the end of the year um, to echo that, to echo that message, to, to, to remind all of our brethren and to pick them up as well. But before uh, we went to that break and watched Brother uh, Phil's nice uh, video clip, we were asking the question of what would happen to a person's life if, in fact, God is not with us? What, what, would, what would then be the experience uh, Brother Andrew. We can actually learn from what happened to uh, God's ancient people, the Israelites. If we read in the book of Deuteronomy, in uh, chapter 31 and the verses 17, uh, let's read what the Bible says. On that day, I will become angry with them and forsake them. I will hide my face from them and they will be destroyed. Many disasters and difficulties will come upon them. And on that day, they will ask, have not these disasters come upon us because our God is not with us? You know, dear viewers, what we're reading here was about Israel. They were God's ancient people. God acknowledged them and they acknowledged our Lord God. And because of that, God was with them throughout their journey. God freed them from slavery in Egypt. God guided them from their enemies guided them as they journeyed through the wilderness. God was giving them anything and everything they needed. And that's what we can see because they were God's people. But, but what happened when uh, Israel uh, became uh, or drifted away from their loyal service to him? What happened when God became angry, when, when God uh, eventually even uh, abandoned them or let's say uh, separated himself from them? If I can jump in, Brother Bob, according to the citation that Brother Andrew read, many disasters and difficulties came to them. And all of this was because they forsook the Lord our God. That is why we should not do anything that would make God angry so that he would forsake us. Because we do not want to suffer the same fate as the Israelites did 
whom disasters and difficulties fell on. We want to preserve the outpouring of God's graces as members of his nation in these last days, members of the Church of Christ. But Brother Phil, just in case we did do something that was against God's will, and because of that, he became angry at us, so, and he allowed us to experience uh, uh, joblessness, work problems, family problems, sicknesses, etc., all of the 2020s. And instead of overcoming life's troubles, became someone who was defeated by them. Should we enter into a state of hopelessness at, at that moment, uh, Brother Phil? Is there, is there still a, a chance for hope? Brother Bob, even if 2021 would bring more hardships, right? Uh, we shouldn't ever become discouraged because our Almighty God gives us a chance to return back to Him. And we can read this here in Malachi 3 and 7. Since the day of your ancestors, you stray from my ordinances and do not practice them. Return to me and I will return to you, says Yahweh of hosts. But you ask, why do we have to return? You see, Brother Bob, our almighty God himself is the one inviting those who have been separated from him because they've strayed uh, from his teachings. They've not practiced his ordinances. What is God's invitation to them then? Our Almighty God is saying to them, return to me and I will return to you. That's why we shouldn't turn away completely from our Almighty God. Let's not be stubborn hearted and pretend as if we didn't hear this call of our Almighty God. And how can one return unto him so that they can receive God's abundant promises, especially of help in these trying times by becoming a part of his nation in these last days? by becoming a part of the daughter of Zion or being a member of the true Church of Christ. And, and that is why, Brother Donald, we're inviting our viewers to join us in our Bible studies on doctrines and join us also in our worship services to have this opportunity of receiving these, these words of our Almighty God and His precious help, not only for the new year, but also beyond. And what is it that God has proclaimed to everyone who decides to return to him and fulfill his will in, the, in their life. What, what, what's next then? Well, this is the promise of our almighty God, Brother Bob, here in Isaiah 54 and 7. We read from the prophet Isaiah. It says here, let me just find it here. I rejected you for a while, but with love and tenderness, I will embrace you again. Our Almighty God is the one who stated this, Brother Bob. He promised that although there were times he, he left and rejected his people because of our sins. Dear friends, he is willing to take us back. For his true and faithful servants then, dear friends, what is God willing to do over and over again? Well, as we read here in the verse, God himself says, I will embrace you again. God loves us very much. He's not pleased to see us suffering and being pinned down by the various troubles in this life. He's ready and willing to embrace us again, to take us back again as his children. How will he do that, brothers? How will God embrace us when we, uh, and hold us again as we journey in this life? Brother Bob, allow me to read here in Deuteronomy 31 and the verse is 8. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will march with you. He will not fail you or let you go or forsake you. Let there be no cowardice or flinching, but fear not. Neither become broken in spirit, depressed, dismayed, and unnerved with alarm. May we not only hear this truth, but also may be fulfilled when it comes to our life. We should fully believe in this promise of God. May this give unto us the courage and the strength that we need, and also that strong will for us not to be afraid, not to be discouraged, not to become depressed or in despair, no matter what problems that we may encounter in this life. Whatever we may face in the new year, and as was mentioned by Brother Phil, in the years beyond, if there's still a world to live in, as long as we have God by our side, there is no reason for us to be negative or be down. 
but rather we should remain optimistic because God will be with us. Dear friends, well, we, we hope that this past year that we've all gone through together has just made us stronger in our faith, stronger in our, our hope and all of God's promises. We made it through. But as we face the new year 2021, there will always be again trials and challenges. There will surely be more natural disasters and injustices and hardships of varying kinds or even more pandemics. Who knows? That will, things will just get worse. But be with us. We invite you into the Church of Christ to be with us a recipient of God's strengthening power that will again bring us through whatever 2021 and beyond will bring. On behalf of all of us here in the Church of Christ, we wish you not only a happy and prosperous new year, but we also continue to invite you to listen and examine the teachings we uphold so that, as I said a moment ago, you, go, you too will benefit from God's promises. And he will be with you too in 2021 and at all times. Well, we'd like to thank Brother Donald Pinock there in Toronto, Canada. Brother Donald, thank you. Brother Phil Velasquez there in the United Kingdom. Thank you, Brother Phil, as well as Brother Andrew Fisher there in Australia. Brothers, thank you all very much for your wonderful contributions to our discussion and for giving to us always Bible-based responses and answers so that the, as the Apostle Peter said to members of the Church of Christ, you will be ready to speak up and tell anyone who asks why you're living the way you are. That's 1 Peter 3, 15. Well, that does it for us here on the Iglesia Ni Cristo International Edition for today. We hope that you'll join us again next time. I'm Brother Bob Pauline. Thanks for watching. And as we come to the end of our program, we invite you as always to join with us for our closing prayer. Our almighty, most merciful and loving Father. Yes, Lord. It's true, O oh God. All of us have experienced so many difficulties in this last year. Yes, Lord. Yes. Or many, yes. this is the year that many would like to forget, O oh God. Yes. But we believe, dear Father, your people in the Church of Christ, we were only able to get through because you were with us. Amen. You upheld us, dear Father. Yes. Lord. Thank you so much, O oh God. Amen. But, O oh God, you want this blessing to be extended to our friends, yes, to our Lord. viewers, to our loved ones. Yes, O oh Lord. Who are not yet considered as your people inside the Church of Christ. Amen. And that's why we felt, O oh God, through this program, through the lesson we studied today, we felt how you are reaching out to them. Yes, O Lord. How you are calling them back to you, dear Father. Amen. So that no matter what we go through in the next year, no matter how severe our tests may be, O oh God, you will be there for us. Yes, You'll be able to answer our prayers yes, and get us through to lead us, O oh Father, to our salvation. Um, so please, O oh God, open their hearts and their minds. Yes, Touch their hearts, dear Father, yes, that Lord. they may be with us soon, dear God, yes, in the true service of you to receive the true salvation come the day of judgment. Uh -huh. Lord Jesus Christ, we call upon you. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for bringing our prayers to our Father. Yes, Lord. This is the reason why we were able to get through, Lord, because of your help. Yes. Lord Jesus, don't leave us alone. When you see us praying to you, answer our prayers. Yes. Bring them to our God. Give us everything we need yes. so we can continue in our services to you and our Father. Amen. Almighty God, we call upon you once again before we end this prayer, before we step into a new year, dear Father, we would like to thank you so much for blessing us with an executive minister who has worked so hard for your church in this last year. He has done absolutely everything to make sure that we remain close to you and worthy of your blessings. Continue to take care of him. Bless him with the best health and life, dear Father. Yes. so that he can continue on in his sacred task, leading all of us toward our salvation. Amen. Thank you for your blessings, O oh God. And we beg for your blessings as we step into another year in our lives. Amen. These things we beg in the name of your Son, our Savior and Lord, Jesus Christ. 
Amen. Amen.